I'm sure every NBA player wants their last game to be like Kobe's where he scored 60 or Tim Duncan's where he was celebrating an NBA championship, but that's not always the case and we've actually seen some pretty depressing last games. Whether it was due to a player holding on for too long, suffering a major injury, or their career just not ending on the best note. And actually a guy like Tracy McGrady is the perfect example. You see in his prime he was one of the greatest scorers of all time, a guy that led the league in scoring twice including a 32 point per game season. In the early 2000s, his name was often in the running for best shooting guard in the league. And as the years went on, himself and Yao Ming made on paper one of the most dangerous duos in the NBA. But even with all of that due to injuries, bad teammates, bad management, and so many other factors, we have to fast forward to the end of T-Mac's career and seeing how he never made it out of the first round even once. Given the talent he had, it was a huge upset. And after bouncing around to the Knicks, Pistons, and Hawks, he played in China for a season which made it certainly seem like his NBA career was over. Over. But after that season in the CBA, McGrady actually gets picked up by the 2013 San Antonio Spurs just a week before the playoffs are set to start. Now this was undoubtedly Tracy's last season in the league, and he was on one of the greatest teams he's ever been a part of because as we know those Spurs teams were dominant, and they were so dominant that they made the NBA Finals that year to play against the Miami Heat. Now t Max's actual last game was in game 3 of that series, and that game was a blowout win so McGrady was put in for the last 6 minutes when the game was pretty much over. He put up 2 shots, missed both, but had 3 assists and 2 rebounds. A pretty lackluster stat line. But the trouble was just beginning because as we know not too long after that, it was that series that Ray Allen would hit the shot and the Miami Heat would eventually beat the Spurs in game 7. McGrady was just one missed 3 away from becoming an NBA champion, but instead his last game was played in one of the most shocking turnaround series of all time, which was depressing for him. But even worse was that he decided to retire at the end of that year because had he hung on for one more year year and stayed with San Antonio? Well, they won the 2014 NBA championship, so that was his other chance to become a champion, and he missed it. And like Tracy McGrady, Vince Carter was a guy that also started his career on the Toronto Raptors. It was there that he put himself on the map and started off what would later become a Hall of Fame career. It was his Toronto days, the dunk contest, and his time with the New Jersey Nets where he was at his best. After that though, he kind of transitioned into being a role player for the next 10 years, because Vince played until he was 43 years old, which made him the fourth oldest player to ever play in a single game when he played his last on March 11th, 2020. You see, there's honestly nothing important about his last game. It was a normal regular season matchup with the Knicks where he recorded five points and one rebound. But the thing was that at the start of the 2019 and 20 season, he let it be known that it was his last year and his retirement tour. But then the NBA got shut down halfway through it. And the depressing part about his last game was really just the fact that he never got to have one. He was planning to go through and play in all these cities for one last time and get the recognition from each team like he deserved. Similar to what Kobe Bryant did when he went on his retirement tour, it was just that Vince never got that, and instead his last game was forced to be this stinker against the Knicks. He was asked if he wanted to come back for at least one more half season so he could end things off the right way, but he declined. So at least he must not have been too upset about it. And we talked about how his career started on the Toronto Raptors, well Hakeem Olajuwon's ended there, and it was kinda weird, because Hakeem was a guy that was drafted by the Houston Rockets first overall, then spent his entire career there developing into a superstar setting countless amount of records and winning championships. He played in Houston for 17 long seasons, but when his game had winded down and he was now 38 years old, the Rockets decided they were finally going to rebuild. So they only offered him a $13 million deal, but Hakeem was looking for more, so he was traded to the Toronto Raptors where he'd play his final season. And just even looking back now, it still doesn't look right seeing him in a Toronto uniform. And for as great of a legacy as Olajuwon had, especially in Houston, it was just weird to see his last game be him getting eliminated in the first round as a member of the Toronto Raptors when he came off the bench and just put up 8 points and 4 rebounds. Usually if a star switches teams in his last season it's to go to a contender, but instead due to problems with management he had ended up on just an average Raptors team. Another big man who didn't end out his career the right way was Shaq. On the Magic, Lakers, and the Heat, he built up a career worthy of having him named the most dominant big man of all time. But after Miami, things started to slow down, and it was because a lot of injuries started to add up, and that was what ultimately took him out of the game. Now Shaq did play at an all-star level all the way up until he was 36 years old, but at 37 on the Cavs his body started to break down. Then at 38 on the Celtics was when he was infamously jogging down the court and suffered an Achilles injury that took him out for most of the year. And it was unfortunate because the Celtics were 19-3 and that year when Shaq played more than 20 minutes. So it was said that he only made it back in time to play two games of the Celtics second round loss to the Heat that year. And it just never seemed right that his final game ended up with him playing for 
his Lakers rival team in a game four loss where he played only three minutes, recorded zeros across the board, and was minus two on the stat sheet, then retired almost immediately after the series. Another all-time Lakers legend also had a pretty depressing last NBA game ever in Magic Johnson. And no, I'm not talking about because of how it initially ended and how he had to quit while he was on top or anything. I'm talking about when he came back for a half a season and had to retire the second time because it wasn't pretty. You see, by 1996, four years after he retired for his sickness, the league had learned more about it so he was able to come back and play for the Lakers. And even though he looked real smooth on the court, at the age of 36, their head coach at the time made him come off the bench as a power forward. He played the whole season there and he obviously hated it, especially in the playoffs when they lost to the Houston Rockets three games to one in the first round. And in his final game, Johnson recorded just eight points, five assists, and five rebounds. And he was so frustrated that he almost came back the next season to play for another team whose name wasn't mentioned so he could go back to playing point guard. But instead, he just decided to retire. His last game was bad enough already, but could you imagine him retiring with another team instead? It would have just been weird. But at least he retired as a Laker. And oddly enough, so did Carl Malone. You see, Carl had a 19-year NBA career, and in it, he made the NBA Finals three times, but lost in every one of them. So given the fact that he was an MVP-level talent and considered to be one of the best in the league at one point, he really didn't want to end his career without a championship, which is why himself and Gary Payton joined Kobe and Shaq in LA, who had just recently three-peated. It was by far his best shot to win it all. And even though he was 40 years old, he was still a starter and a main contributor on that team. But now the playoffs come around, and the Lakers look great. They make light work of their first three opponents, and Malone's chances at his first championship are looking better than ever. But then they ran into the Detroit Pistons, who destroyed the Lakers super team four games to one, and Carl was nowhere to be found in that series, averaging six points and eight rebounds a game. And his last game ever played turned out to be game four, where he played through an injury and put up two points, two assists, and five rebounds in a loss. Then he didn't play game five at all due to the injury. It was just rough for him to go out like that, not only in an embarrassing finals loss, but to kind of sell out in his last ever season by joining a super team, then not even having anything to show for it. Now, I'm actually shocked by this, but we have one more member of the LA Lakers, and surprisingly, a pretty similar scenario happened to Steve Nash there, at least at first, because he was brought into LA's new super team in 2012, and they had championship aspirations. Well, that entire season, Steve Nash never stayed healthy, and the championship didn't work out. His next season was filled with even more injuries, and so much so that he only played 15 games and came off the bench for the first time in his career since 1999. So the 2013 and 14 season ended, and Steve intended to play in 2015 and make it his last year. Well, just like we mentioned for Vince Carter earlier, Nash never got his retirement tour because during a preseason game his back problems got worse and he was ruled out for the entire season which made his last official regular season NBA game April 8th 2014 where he came off the bench and put up three points and five assists in 13 minutes in a regular season game where the Lakers had a 25 and 53 record going in so after all he went through in his career it was a really anticlimactic way for him to go out and same goes for Dennis Rodman of course he had a Hall of Fame career thanks to his time on the Pistons and the Bulls he was able to play with with greats like Isaiah Thomas, Michael Jordan, and Scottie Pippen, in scenarios that really worked out well for him. On Detroit, that team was perfect for the type of guy Rodman was. Then on the Bulls, he had gotten the fame and the money, but he had Phil Jackson and Michael Jordan to keep him in check. So it made sense that when he left that environment, everything kind of got out of hand. He played with the Lakers for half a season in 1999, then moved to the Dallas Mavericks in 2000. Before he got there, the Mavs had just went 10 and three. After him, they went four and nine. He only played in 12 total games and in them got six technicals, two ejections, and faced a one game suspension. On a team with no real leadership, just trying to make the playoffs, Dennis was out of control. So they waived him after 12 games and that made his last ever game on March 7th, 2000, where he actually had a very Dennis Rodman stat line of two points, one assist, and 15 rebounds. But at least he went out on his own terms because that wasn't the case for Yao Ming. The story of Yao's career was his foot injuries. The dude literally had an Achilles heel. In the second second half of his career, he was injured almost every single season. I mean, the dude only played eight years in the league, and in the last five of them, he played only 185 out of 492 total games, with a big part of that being because he missed the entire 2009 season. So the Houston Rockets went into 2010 saying that Yao would only play 24 minutes a game, no back-to-backs, and that they wanted to keep Yao healthy long-term. Well, that didn't last long at all because after five games into that year, Yao had developed a stress fracture in his foot and he was forced to retire. And in his final game, he played just six minutes, recorded zero points, one rebound, and one block. Not many Hall of Fame players' last game is 
actually because of an injury. So it was a shame that Yao went out the way that so many people feared he would for his entire career. Larry Bird was another guy whose career ended due to injuries in 1992, and it was depressing. Just the fact that the whole back injury started due to him shoveling gravel in his mom's garden, to the fact that he was still dramatically helping his team up until the day he was forced to retire. In his last two seasons, the Celtics were 71 and 28 when he played, and 30 and 29 when he didn't. Then for him to go out in a three game to one loss to the Cavs in the playoffs was rough. Especially seeing that he was only able to put up 12 points, 5 rebounds, and 4 assists in his last game ever. The worst part about it was that we all knew we were seeing the all time greats career end far too early due to a recurring injury. All of these career endings may have been depressing, but hey, at least on the bright side, they all gave us historic careers that have stood the test of time in NBA history. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and I'll catch you next video.